What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here and this is my Moto G Stylus review. So let's get started. So this is the new Motorola Moto G Stylus. This phone has been very highly anticipated because it's one of Motorola's first budget devices to feature a built-in stylus, which is really cool. In addition to that, this phone is supposed to make its way over to a variety of different carriers throughout this year. And of course, right now, it is available factory unlocked. So the device is bound to be a very big success for the company. Now, I've had the pleasure of using this device for quite a bit of time now, and I'm really excited to share my thoughts about it with you. Now, at the time of me recording this video, you can buy the unlocked Moto G Stylus for $299. Now, it is possible that since I recorded this video, the price has gone down, so certainly take a look at the link in the video description to see the most up-to-date pricing for the phone. And of course, if you do decide to get this phone through a carrier, then you likely will be getting a variety of different deals going that route too. A lot of carriers are going to offer different promotions, so certainly do some research, see what options are available at the time of you watching this video, but I'd imagine that the majority of people out there probably will not be paying the full $299 for the phone. Now if you do get the unlocked variant of the device, it's going to work with all four major US carriers, so AT&T, T-Mobile, Sprint, and Verizon, and various carriers under those carriers. I've been using the phone personally with Cricut Wireless, and it's been a really good experience. Now the device features a large 6.4 inch display. The display itself is LCD. It's a 1080p display. We're getting a PPI of 399, a 19 by nine aspect ratio. So a little bit of a more narrow but taller design. And we're getting an 83.7% screen to body ratio. Now up top here, you can see that we do have a hole punch for the front facing camera. And the Moto G Stylus features a 16 megapixel front facing camera. Now later on in the video, I will be showing you photo and video samples from the device. So that's definitely going to be very interesting, but the phone does take very good pictures. Now internally, we're getting 128 gigabytes of storage. And if that's not enough for you, you can expand it with a micro SD card. You know, I'm really glad that the Moto G Stylus does come with quite a bit of internal storage at 128 gigs because nowadays apps are getting bigger and bigger. You've probably noticed this every time you update an app, it seems like it grows in size. So especially compared to five or, you know, even 10 years ago, apps were way smaller. So maybe in the past, 32 gigs might have been adequate for you. But moving into the future, you are going to need a phone that offers quite a bit of storage. So I'm glad that if you do go this route, despite this phone being a bit less expensive than some premium alternatives, such as the Galaxy S20 or LG V60 or even the iPhone 11, you still will get very good longevity with this device because it does give you so much internal storage. In fact, what's hilarious is that the iPhone 11, which is 699, gives you half the amount of internal storage despite it being so much more expensive. So that's very eye-opening. Now let me know if you'd like me to compare the iPhone 11 to the Moto G Stylus in a separate video to really see how you're getting a lot more with the G Stylus despite it being so much less expensive. Now of course, if 128 gigs is not enough for you, the phone also offers micro SD card expansion, which is really cool. There is no wireless charging though with the device, which is a bit unfortunate, but expected for a phone in this price range. The phone does have a fingerprint sensor on the back it's a very fast and accurate fingerprint sensor, so nothing but good things to say about that. But one of the downsides with the Moto G Stylus is that there's no face unlock. That's really strange. I don't know why there's no face unlock, especially when the majority of Android devices out there do offer that. And the front-facing camera on the device is a very good front-facing camera. So I feel like they could easily implement face unlock in a software update if they wanted to, and I really hope they do. Now on the back of the device, we get a triple camera setup. I know it looks like four cameras, but this circle at the bottom is not a camera. That's actually part of the autofocus. But with the phone, we're getting a 48 megapixel main camera. We're getting a 16 megapixel ultra wide angle camera, which is actually video only, which is kind of strange. And we're getting a two megapixel macro camera. 
Now, one of the cool things about the macro camera is that if the phone senses that you're taking a close-up photo, at least in the auto mode, it will automatically switch over to the macro camera to take that photo. Now, it's a little bit different compared to some other devices where you have to manually go over to the macro camera to use it. I really like how Motorola makes it so that you will automatically switch over to that camera so that you're able to use it. So Motorola calls the ultra wide angle camera on this device an action camera. Essentially, they're trying to replicate the effects that you get with a GoPro with this phone. And in some ways it works, and in other ways it's a little bit disappointing. One of the things I do like about this ultra wide angle camera is that it allows you to record horizontal video by holding the phone vertically. That's a really cool feature and I wish that more phones offered that because I know for many people, they're gonna instinctively hold the phone vertical. That's where you see a lot of that really annoying vertical video all over social media. But with this device, you can hold the phone vertically but record video horizontally. But you can only do that with the ultra wide angle camera. Now, like I said, you do not have the ability to take photos with the ultra wide angle camera, unfortunately. So if I wanted to take a photo using this camera, I simply don't have that ability. So that's another thing that I wish Motorola would add in a software update. Let's hope they do. And I don't know if that's a deal breaker. It really just depends on your personal preference. I mean, I know that having this ability to record video horizontally while holding the phone vertically is a really unique feature. So that might be a reason to go for the phone. It just depends on the way that you like to use your device. Now, if you wanna use the 48 megapixel main camera to record video instead, you can actually switch over to that and then it switches to that camera. You can see things are significantly cropped in here, but at the same time, it's gonna look a little bit clearer. It's not gonna be quite as wide, of course, but at least you do have the option to record video with the main camera. Now, one of the perks of recording video with the main camera is that you can get super close to whatever object you're taking video of, whereas with the ultra wide angle camera using the action cam, there isn't really any ability to take video close up. So that's due to the lens, of course, on here. It's more optimized for a wider field of view. Now with the phone, we're getting portrait mode with both the front and rear cameras, which is really cool. And again, a little bit later in the video, I'll show you some samples of that, but great for people that really do like portrait mode. Now, as far as the internal specifications of the device, we're getting four gigabytes of RAM with the Moto G stylus, and we're getting the Qualcomm Snapdragon 665. Now I did run an Antutu benchmark test with the phone and let me show you the score that I got. So with the device, I got an overall score of 165528. So if you're not too familiar with these scores, it might not mean much to you, but essentially this is gonna put this device on par with the Galaxy A51, for example. This score is a lot lower than some of the flagships out there like the Galaxy S20 Ultra, which has a score in the 500,000 range. But with a score like this, the majority of people out there that like to do social media, watch videos, send text messages, do phone calls, you know, basic tasks like that, maybe not so much high intensity gaming or video editing, you know, those are more advanced tasks, but for the more basic mainstream tasks that you use your phone for, the Moto G stylus certainly will get the job done. Now with the phone, we're getting 4K video recording with the rear camera and we're getting 1080p for the front. Now for the action camera on the back, you're actually limited to 1080p at 60 FPS. But with the 48 megapixel camera, that's where you get 4K video support. And then the front camera is 1080p. Now I remember it wasn't too long ago that 4K video recording was nowhere to be found with budget devices. So it's really cool that we do get that feature with the Moto G stylus. Now this device features a 4,000 milliamp hour internal battery, which is very impressive. Now pairing that up with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 665 will give you very good battery life, so that's for sure. I am going to be putting out a battery drain test very soon, so stay tuned for that as well. That'll be its own separate video. Now as far as the software goes here, the Moto G Stylus runs Android 10. And one of the things I really like about Motorola's software experience is that it's very close to stock Android. You can see here, we're getting a very familiar setup. It looks very much like stock Android. Now they have added some extra bonus features, of course, features that go along with the stylus, but also some other applications like Moto Audio, Moto Note, which is a companion of the stylus. But beyond that, you're pretty much just getting the Google goodies here. Facebook is pre-installed, but I added quite a few other applications myself to use as I test the phone. So I added all of these apps personally, but otherwise you're getting a very stock experience with the phone.
So I am a big fan of that. And if you've used other stock Android phones in the past, maybe a Pixel phone, for example, then the experience here is gonna be very easy and familiar. Now, one of the downsides with the Moto G stylus is that there's no NFC. Now, NFC is used most commonly for payments. So if you wanted to use Google Pay at a cash register, you unfortunately cannot do that with this phone. So for some people, that might be a deal breaker. But that's pretty much everything you need to know involving the specifications of the phone. Now, as far as the hardware goes, I already talked a lot about the display here. But again, you know, it's a really good looking display. It puts off really good colors. Now, it is a shame that it is LCD. I really wish that it was AMOLED. But for what it is, I think it does get the job done. There is one thing, though, that I'm not crazy about with this display. So this issue is especially obvious when you have a purely white page or image pulled up on the phone. And that is that in the corners of the phone, you can see that the colors are a little bit different. It's like a little darker in the corners. Can you kind of see that? How on the bottom of the phone, it's darker. And then around the cutout for the front facing camera, the display is a little bit darker. And I noticed that other reviewers have pointed that out as well. So it's certainly not a defect with the phone. It's just a result of Motorola maybe not using the most high-end LCD panel out there. And what's funny is that they kind of tried to hide that by adding this gradient that goes over every wallpaper that's added to the phone. So that's another thing that I think for 99% of people out there, it's not gonna bother them. It's certainly not gonna get in the way of the user experience with the phone, but it is something interesting. You know, I don't see that with very many other devices that I cover, especially devices with AMOLED displays. But the good news though, is that the display itself in general is very good looking. You can see very great colors here. So overall, I am very happy with it. Now, at the bottom of the device, you can see a slightly thicker bottom bezel compared to the other bezels on the phone. So a little bit more of an old school design, something we'd expect to see more in 2019, not so much in 2020. But again, another thing that I think is not a deal breaker, I think it's a good looking phone and it certainly won't get in the way of usability. Now, taking a look at the left side of the device, we have the slot for the micro SD card and SIM card. By the way, this phone does have a purely plastic build, minus the display, of course. So it's all plastic, but it does feel very solid. Then on the right of the device, we have the power button and the volume button. Then on the top, we have the noise canceling microphone. And then on the bottom of the phone, we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. We have the USB-C port for charging and data transfer. We have the microphone and we have the speaker. And the best part, we have the stylus. So here is the stylus. And this is, of course, one of the signature features with the phone and probably the main reason why many people will decide to go for this device. Now, whether you think that you're going to be using the stylus every day or you think that maybe you'll use it occasionally, it's a great thing to have nonetheless. You know, it doesn't really get in the way. It stows away really nicely in the device. So there's nothing inconvenient about it. Now, even if you're not going to be using the stylus to draw, for example, it's still a great tool to use to navigate around the phone. And if your fingers are really greasy, for example, or maybe you have really long fingernails and it's sometimes a struggle to use a touchscreen like this, then having the stylus can definitely be a great thing to have. Now, of course, if you want to take notes or draw things with the stylus, you certainly can do that as well. And they have this nice little pop out on the right side here where you can add some of your favorite apps. They also, of course, have some apps here already that are specially made to be used with the stylus. But you can also tap on that plus button to conveniently create a new note. So you can write things. Let me pick out a different pen here. So you can change the pen tip size, which is helpful. So, hello. So if you're someone that's familiar with the Galaxy Note devices from Samsung, but maybe you don't wanna pay that much money, then this is certainly kind of a lower end alternative. Now, this stylus is certainly lacking compared to what's offered with the Note, but that makes sense because this phone is so much less expensive. And of course, this stylus is a lot less versatile as well. But in general, I'm glad that the feature is present here on the device. Like I said, when you don't wanna use the stylus, you can stow it away so it doesn't really get in the way of anything. And then when your display is off, you can pull out the stylus here and it will immediately go over to your note app. So you can create notes, do whatever. So maybe you're quickly wanting to create a note, but you don't wanna go through all the menus and everything. All you have to do is just pull the stylus out of the phone and it immediately will take you over to here. And then from there, you can 
put in your actual password or if you wanna put in you know, your fingerprint to access the device, you can go further into the phone. But it is pretty sweet that you can at least take notes without having to use a password or authenticate anything. So I'm definitely a big fan of the stylus feature. And let me know in the comment section below, are there any other features or benefits that you wish the stylus offered or are you pretty satisfied with what Motorola is providing? I feel like a lot of people that buy Galaxy Note devices, for example, don't use all of those extra more advanced features. Of course, for power users, for people that do need those features, it's cool that Samsung does provide them, but it's also nice that Motorola gives you all the essentials you need so I would say that the majority of people out there that would want a stylus with their phone will get all the features that they would want with the Moto G stylus. Now taking a look at the backside of the device, we have this really cool look here. It's called Mystic Indigo and it definitely is very mystical. But you can see of course we have the camera module, flash, fingerprint sensor, but beyond that, that's about it. Now this is plastic of course, and if you do decide to use this device without a case, you probably will be getting some scratches over time. So I do recommend going with at least a clear case, and if you want to get something more durable or more advanced, there are plenty of options available online. Features NFC, so that's amazing. You are getting Samsung Pay with the device. So this phone is fantastic for watching video content for multiple reasons. The first reason is, like I mentioned before, the display is very good looking. So despite it being LCD and not AMOLED, the colors still are really good. You can of course crop in for a more immersive viewing experience. But the coolest thing about watching video on the phone is that you actually get audio that comes out of both the earpiece and the speaker. So you get both a left and right channel of audio coming out of this device. And to get that with a phone in this price range is pretty unheard of. For example, the Samsung Galaxy A51, which is probably this phone's most significant competitor, does not offer that. You just get sound coming out of the bottom of the phone. And while that is still good with that device, this device is even better. So this does get very loud, and it is an excellent phone for watching video content overall. Now this phone is awesome for Instagram. So everything scrolls very smoothly. You can zoom in nice and smoothly as well. You can of course swipe over. You can record stories. So I'm recording a story right now with the Moto G stylus. Record stories. So I'm recording a story right now with the Moto G stylus. So a super stories. loud stories. mic with this phone. And by the way, I'm actually using the Samsung Galaxy A51 to record this video. So let me know what you think of the quality. Yeah, basically, this phone is really good for social media. You can go through your various stories and see what's going on. So you know, check out all your favorite influencers and your friends, of course. So it's an excellent device for social media. But let's now get into the part that you've all been waiting for, the photo and video quality. So I've been very happy with the photo and video quality from the device. Now I will show you some video samples right after this, and I'll let you be the judge for that. But overall, I am satisfied with the quality. But the device also offers some really interesting camera features. So for example, they have this feature where you can pick a certain color and the other colors will be black and white. So that's kind of an artsy, different type of feature there, kind of cool. Another feature, you can have the device replace everything in the background with a solid color. Now, I've done this before through Photoshop and it takes me a while to do this kind of thing. And the device will do it for you automatically, which is really sweet. Close-up photos are really cool as well, since like I mentioned before, the device will automatically switch over to the macro camera, so that's really good too. Maybe the only situation where the phone does seem to struggle a little bit is with photos taken at night. Now the phone does have a special night mode, and I did try that out here, and you can see this is a photo without the night mode, and this is a photo with the night mode. I took one and then the other immediately after. And yes, the night mode does brighten things up quite a bit, but at the same time, things are pretty blurry. So I don't know if these night photos are usable necessarily. So that is one limitation there. So if you are really looking for a budget phone that does offer very good nighttime photos, then I would say take a look at the Google Pixel 3a or maybe even the upcoming 4a. I don't know anything about that phone, but I'd suspect that it probably will have class leading nighttime photography. But if you don't really take photos at night, and I personally do not, <laughs> then I think you'll be completely happy with the camera abilities with the Moto G stylus. But let's now take a look at some video samples. 
Hi everyone, this is Kevin here, coming at you with a test video from the Moto G Stylus using the front facing camera at 1080p at 30 frames per second. So let me know what you think of the quality from the device. It is kind of getting closer to the sun going down, but I think I still have about an hour just to kind of give you an idea of the time of day. But yeah, definitely let me know what you think of the quality overall. And... Hopefully you think it's good. Hi everyone, this is Kevin here, coming at you with a test video from the Moto G Stylus using the Action Cam. So this is the wide angle Action Cam on the device. So let me know what you think of the quality. This is of course using the dedicated ultra wide angle camera, but you can only use it for video and there is no close-up autofocus that's for sure but not a problem let me know what you think of the stabilization as well and the colors another thing i want to mention too just because i know some people will ask call quality with the moto g stylus is completely fine things worked very well with cricut wireless for me so i had no problems with that so is the Moto G stylus worth buying? What are the reasons to buy it and what are some reasons to avoid it? First thing, if you want a phone with a stylus that is affordable, this is pretty much the best option out there. I did do a video comparing the Moto G stylus to the LG Stylo 5 and it's hardly a comparison. The G stylus is so much better than the Stylo 5 and I'll let that video explain all of that. So the stylus is one reason to get this phone. Another reason to get this phone is because it does work with all four major US carriers, whereas there are other unlocked phones that only work with GSM carriers. So that compatibility is really cool. Another thing I like about the phone is the form factor. It's a very practical phone in the way that it's designed. Another thing I like about it is the performance. The Qualcomm Snapdragon 665 is a beast. It definitely gets the job done. I like that the processor gives us the ability to do things like record 4K video. That's really cool as well. And you are going to get very good battery life with this phone. I also like that we're getting a lot of storage at 128 gigs. And the camera quality with the device is very good as well. Now as far as the things that I don't like, I do not like that we don't get face unlock. Where is that feature Motorola? Come on, all your competitors offer face unlock. Why do you not offer that with this phone? Another feature that I'm not a big fan of is the lack of having the ability to take ultra wide angle photos. We have an ultra wide angle camera on the device, so why can't we use it to take photos? That's a feature that the Galaxy A51, for example, has that works extremely well. So Motorola is kind of behind some of the competition by having an ultra wide angle camera on this device that only takes video. But those are really the main downsides with the phone. I suppose the lack of an AMOLED display is another downside, but overall I'm pretty happy with this display. I don't think it's really gonna bother anyone out there in the real world. So would I recommend the phone? Yes, I would recommend it, but know what you're getting into. Be well aware of those downsides about the device before purchasing it. But if you're aware of those downsides and they don't bother you, then I would say this phone is definitely a good choice to go with. So I hope you enjoyed this review about the Moto G Stylus. Let me know what you think about the device in the comment section below, and then take a look at the link in the video description to see the most up-to-date pricing for the phone. But this is Kevin here, this is the Moto G Stylus, and I will see you in the next video.